What's up, I'm Matt Vincent, and I've been doing a lot of cycling lately, as you guys have been watching, and I'm getting some questions. So here's one of those questions that I've been getting a ton is, I'm a big guy, I like what you're doing, I'd like to get into cycling, what's your recommendation for my first bike? Well, this, probably not your first bike. We're gonna head off to Wheelhouse Bicycles and meet my friend, Nate, and he's gonna kinda show us through what you should expect to go into a shop and get your first bike. So, we came out to Wheelhouse Bikes to talk to Nate, get some advice for people trying to figure out their first bike they should buy. And that's going to turn into probably me buying the bike. It's a giant, I mean, it's basically what I've been doing. Here at Wheelhouse Bikes on our little field trip for the day, and we're going to talk to the guys at the bike shop about what you should be looking for for buying your first bike. I have Nate and I have Sam. They're going to give a little bit of insight into what you should be looking for. So when people first come in, kind of want to get some background information, two important questions. Price limit, price range, that's most important. We don't want to sell you anything that's over what you're looking for and we don't want to undersell you as well. We want you on the product that you're comfortable with. Price range, most importantly, uh, and we want to get you on something that's useful for you. In other words, we don't want to sell you a go fast road bike if you want to go around Creefcourt Park and want to do four miles an hour. So we want to get you on the bike that's good for you. And Sam, he's a fitter, so he's, uh, he's good at all that type of stuff. You know, something like this right here, this is a kind of middle of line, full carbon road bike, carbon fiber wheels, tubeless tires, Altegra level componentry on it. Good around bike for someone who comes in that wants to do gravel, wants to do on-road, it kind of wants to leave it at that. Plus it looks cool, it's all black, so through axles, that's kind of what everyone's buying in the bike industry now. It's stiffer, so when you're riding up hills and everything, it less flex, everything is about stiffness to weight ratio. Sam will tell you about that, he's cat one on-road and off-road. Two boost ready, which is a big benefit these days. Ride quality, rolling resistance, flat resistance. All of the our tire clearances are much higher than they were previously. So you're gonna get a good ride out of this. It's going to be a bike that can grow with you as your fitness level rises. It's something that can uh, rise to that occasion with you. So definitely something very physically ambitious, somebody who's looking to stay in shape somebody who's looking to do events or set some goals in their own life, this can keep up and help you meet those goals. You know, I think it's important to have a bike that can kind of scale with you. Correct. I mean, it's one thing to go out and like buy your first bike, but there's a certain level of like a threshold on bikes that the quality really makes a big difference than say just going to buy something from Walmart or Target or any of these big box stores. Because once you start looking into real bike shop stuff and you kind of get to that threshold of bike, you can start upgrading your stuff because they're standard fit. You know, like they were saying with the through axles or any of this, the technology is going to be the same from your middle of the road stuff all the way up the limit and that way you can upgrade your frame. Whereas some of the stuff you would get Walmart or anything like that, you can't. There, there's such archaic technology on a lot of them. Some of them still use threaded headsets, etc. They're just not gonna translate that you can't even bother upgrading it. That being a big factor, like know that if you're someone who's gonna wanna tinker with stuff and make upgrades, then buy a bike at that threshold that at least you can kind of start going forward. Yeah, and put it this way, if you buy something that number one fits you and that you enjoy riding, you're more likely to ride it. So everyone comes in with a price limit and they say, hey, $500, $1,000, they kind of throw me a price. And I tell everyone, you know, you're not only buying something that's better than a Walmart Target bike, but if it fits you properly and it's comfortable, you're more likely to take it off the hook in your garage and go ride it. If you buy something that's cheap, number one, it's not a good quality product, but you're less likely to ride it because you don't enjoy riding it because of how it fits you. Uh, so that's very important is to buy something that fits you. And then any bike shop for that matter, some are better than others at this, but if you buy something at a well-known bike shop, been in business for a while, either that or knows what they're doing, you're most likely gonna get a service plan. Me personally, we service everything you own for free as long as you own it. Some stores do that, some stores don't do that. That's kind of an old school way of doing it, but that's what we prefer doing. You buy a bike from us, we think that you should be taken care of for as long as you own it. And that you're looking at something that's a tune-up, right? Where you're gonna go 
ahead and readjust Everything. the brakes and the table. Correct. The cables and, and what, uh, true the wheels. Yeah, so we'll take your wheels off. We're gonna true your wheels, adjust your bearings uh, on stuff that you can adjust bearings on. We're gonna bleed your brakes if they're hydraulic, lubricate everything, take your cables out of your housing, degrease the cable through the housing so everything slides better, clean it all up and basically turn it around and make it a new bike. And we suggest doing that once a year minimum if you're someone who rides, let's just say once or twice a week. If you're someone like Matt over here that rides all the time, maybe every six months. If you're someone yeah. like me currently, maybe once every four years. Yeah, and luckily for me, as I've learned throughout the past, like I can work on my own stuff to an extent. There's a handful of things I don't have, like if I need to chop and redo hydraulic housing or bleed brakes. These are a thing I'd rather leave up to have someone professional do in a shop. It's just so much less of a hassle when everything's at your fingertips at a shop. Like that's a big part of it. Like, I mean, what are you guys charging for tune-ups? If you buy a bike here, it's free. But if you don't buy a bike here and you come in, ballpark $70 labor plus parts. And sometimes you need more than that and sometimes you need less than that, but ballpark $70, $75 labor-wise is gonna cover everything that I just told you about. And it, it's a very fair price. It's $75, you can make your bike that's got a thousand miles on it and ride it like a brand new bike. And your bike shop owners and stuff like that, like there's, we're talking about fit and making sure the bike fits you well. And there's basically two versions of that. There's kind of a generic fit where somebody can be able to kind of eyeball things and make sure you have you know, the right frame height for, for your body type plus leg length, put the seat and the stem where it should be. And then there's like full professional fitting, which Sam does. And at some point down the road, I will most likely come back in and get professionally fit. As we were talking that one of the things that's really beneficial for that professional fit are guys like me who are, who are beat up, who do have some joint issues. Yes. That's a, you know, there's a lot that I would recommend with going to an actual bike shop and talking to those guys, professionals that do this, they, they're gonna know the area that you're riding better. They can kind of make a lot of really great suggestions and that's it. So, I mean, number one is figure out the type of riding that you wanna go do. Number two, figure out your budget. And then number three, come talk to these guys or whoever's at the bike shop in your area and go ride a bunch of stuff around. You're gonna throw your leg over something and it's gonna click and you're gonna go. And vice versa. Oh, right. You know, the number one thing is whatever bike shop you walk into, and I'm big on this, and Sam, he's big on this too, and you know, we have another store in Illinois that will very big on this as well. We, you should never walk into a bike shop and feel pressured to buy a bike, ever. There's a lot of people who will walk into different stores and feel like they have to spend a certain amount of money because that's what the salesperson wants them to ride. So when you walk in my door in any good store for this matter, it should be complete opposite. The salesperson should sell you the bike based off of what you want to spend and uh, what you want to do. I'm not here, Sam's not here. Any good salesperson in any store is not here to upsell you. That's not what we're about and that's not what it should be about when you go to a bike shop. We want you to walk walk in, have a smile on your face. If you're not sure you want to buy it, you're going to leave, you're going to do your research, and you're going to come back when you're ready to go. We don't want you buying anything that you're not comfortable with buying, price-wise, color-wise, style-wise, anything like that. Well, that's that. I hope that helps the questions for kind of your bigger guys looking to get bikes. The other thing with being a bigger guy that I really recommend, I man, going your Walmart, Target, that route with a bike, if you're over 200 pounds, which most of you guys listening are, they're just not gonna hold up as well. It's one thing going in to buy that type of bike and you're, you know, 130, 140 pound grandmother and you're gonna just go pedal around the park. The bike's probably gonna get the job done. But if you want to have something that you can train on and have some performance, there's gonna be a little bit different threshold. Think about this being the difference in buying a really shit barbell from Academy or, or wherever you have in your area, Dick's or any of that type of stuff, versus buying a Texas Powerlift bar. Like you can buy once with a Texas Powerlift bar and then never have to sweat your barbell again. So bikes can go the same way. Buy once, do it right, and then that bike can be something you can enjoy for years and thousands of miles. I want to thank Nate and thank Sam for their time and thanks for Wheelhouse Bikes. And um, I might, I might just take this one. <laughs> Probably. Back to the basement, Brant. We're back from our field trip from Wheelhouse Bikes. I wanna thank Nate for taking time, showing us around his new shop. If you're in the St. Louis area, this is a really, really great shop. Go check them out. That's your information. So if you're looking to get a bike, take this information, run with it, and spend a little cash to get the best thing that you can for the riding you're trying to do. Spending that extra money, like it's not always just performance, but it's about quality. There's a threshold of quality that Nate and I talked about that I think makes a big difference for a rider, especially a bigger guy. And what you want is the nicest bike that you can get so that you're gonna enjoy riding it and you'll be riding it more. That's really the only thing matters. The bike for you is the one that you're gonna get on the most and ride the most. That's the answer. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please let me know what you think about the bike content. 
trying to mix things up. I'm not just focused on strength and conditioning stuff. I, I like a lot of different things and I'm trying to mix up content that's more aligned with what I'm doing. But overall, what I give a shit about is being healthy and fit and capable and chasing some goals. And right now, on the bike right now, it doesn't hurt my knee, it's great rehab, and I'm getting some adventure. Let me know what you think below. Hit like, subscribe, join the channel, spread hate, always party.